Hello, in this video we're going to be examining control charts, specifically a control chart known as the X-bar chart and another known as the R chart. Control charts are used to monitor processes and they help to inform management when a process has gone out of control and therefore needs correction. In the the control charts we're going to look at in this video are used for continuous variables. These are things that can be measured with any degree of precision, such as height or weight. So let's look at the data here. I have 12 samples, but more importantly, each sample has a sample size of 5. That is, we have 5 measurements here in sample 1 and each of the others. Uh, that's just Let's just put a, a, a context on this. Suppose that these values here, the five values in the sample, represent, say, weight in grams of something that's been made. Now, typically, in control charts, your samples are taken at regular intervals. So perhaps we have a machine where every hour we, we sample five uh, of the things that we produced and measure their weight. Control charts, uh, we're going to be borrowing some formulas developed by statisticians, and there is a table of context, uh, content, excuse me, constants, which have to be referred to, um, depending on the sample size, A2, D3, and D4, so we'll refer to those uh, when we need to. Now, the first thing we're going to do is calculate X bar, that is the mean or average for each sample. So we'll grab our average function in Excel, and we'll grab the five values in that sample. Leave them in relative reference so we can copy this formula down. So the average of these first five values is 100.2, and let's just get the average for each of the other 12 samples. There we go, easily enough. R stands for range, and range is simply the uh, largest value minus the smallest value. So for this sample, we could get the largest using the Excel function max. So this will give us the largest of these five. And then minus the smallest, we'll use a min function for that. The smallest of these five. So max minus min. So the range of the first one here is 4. Copy it down, we'll get the range for the others. Okay, it varies as does x bar. The next thing we're going to calculate is the average of these averages. Okay, since the average is called x bar, the average of those averages would be x double bar, as I've written here. But I also wanted to let you know that x double bar, the average of the averages, is often known as the, the grand average. Okay, so same thing as x double bar. So we can do that very easily using our average function. We would just take the average of these averages. And x double bar turns out to be a little less than 100. Now, R is a range, so the average of the ranges would be known as X bar. So again, average of these 12 values here. And so a little over 5. All right, we've done the, the prep work that we need to do in order to calculate what's known as the upper control limit, the center line, and the lower control limit. Center line um, is, is, you might say, an approximation. That is, there are some control charts where it won't be exactly in the center, but it will always be in between the upper and lower control limit. So first thing, what does n equal? In statistics, n always equals a sample size, meaning n equals 5, not 12. It's not how many samples, it's how many values in each sample. Now, A2 is a constant which needs to come from this chart. So let's, let's move down in the chart a bit. A2, we have a bunch of different values. What you have to do is go, okay, 
what is the value of n? It's 5. So anything we draw from this chart for this example would have to be uh, coming from this line with a sample size of 5. So what do we need to use for our control chart formulas? Well, the upper control limit will use A2, and the lower one will, will also. So in the next chart I'm going to be doing, it'll be 0.557. So let's see how we do this. I've kind of set this up for you. A control chart will have a center line. It'll have an upper control limit and a lower control limit. Uh, let's look in the box here. The center line is just x double bar, which is that grand average. So all we have to do is, is put it over there. So just do your equal sign and click on x double bar, that grand average. For reason that will become clear later, I want you to make that absolute reference. So it was 98. Notice we just copied it. Let's do the upper control limit next. So let's just follow the formula here in the box. As the upper control limit again equals x double bar. All right. Make sure you start with an equal sign. So it equals grand average x double bar. And again, in, in these three calculations, make all cell references absolute. And then we would have plus and it reads plus A2. So we go to the chart and the value of A2 would be that 0.557. And then it would be times here R bar. So that's that 5.3. Right, and I will click uh, enter. And it's a bit higher than the center, 102. Now for the lower control line, again, do an equal and look at the formula. It's the same as the UCL except for the addition changes to a subtraction. So again, click on your grand average, x double bar, this time minus A2, it's still the same value of A2, so it's 0.557. And then it would be times and finally times R bar. Click on that, make it absolute. And with the R, the X bar chart, the center line is exactly in the middle of the lower and upper control limit. We want to draw these as three straight lines. Excel uh, can easily draw a straight line as long as you give it several points. You can use the, the, the function that says connect with straight lines. So the reason I made these all absolute reference is so if I copy them down through all 12 samples, we won't have any changes. And you'll see that this will be very easy for us to graph. Very easy. Let's select the entire table with these three headings. Let's go up to insert. And let's, under recommended charts, choose the one with straight lines. And there, here we are. Insert this chart, line chart. Select the first one. And there we have a nice graph with, uh, the important thing is the, upper control limit and the lower control limit. Those are the most two important things. Let's put a title on this. This is called an X bar chart. Also known as a mean chart. X bar means a mean or an average. Now what we want to do is we want within this chart to also uh, insert our actual different uh, averages for each of the 12 samples. Easy way to do that is click on your funnel, go down to select data. We see the three things we already had. We want to click on add. And here's how we add something to it. Um, and this is PC based, by the way. Click on the title for X bar. 
the series name and then for the series values just go and click um, insert these 12 data values and click OK a couple of times and here's the deal uh, in most cases hopefully your values are fairly close to the center line but they can stray from the center line you basically have a signal that your system is out of control if a point such as that sample 8 here goes below the lower control limit or conversely if it's shot up above the upper control limit so sample 8 is out of control the mean is is too low for the particular system so what that would tell an operator or perhaps management is try to find the reason for that happening now here's here's a possibility suppose that sample 8 was produced by a substitute who wasn't well trained well so we track that down we realize oh there's an explanation for the problem and we make a point of not making that mistake again either not using that substitute or giving that that person better training so when he or she does substitute um, he or she can produce you know values that are in control what a manager would do after finding out a reason for why that sample was out of control would probably go back to the original chart and then delete that sample that will update the graph and it'll also bring your two control limits a little tighter it'll make that gap narrower which will make it easier to detect out of control uh, problems in the future now the other um, control chart that is usually paired with this is the R chart so that's going to be concerned with these R values here so let's look at the formulas we have a D4 and a D3 well first off our sample size is still five five measurements each time around and let's just go down and grab the right values so D3 would equal zero and D4 would equal the 2.114. Sorry, you can't see that. Move it where you can, 2.114. Probably want to move it a little higher there since we're going to do um, this one next. So let's follow those formulas. The center line equals well it just equals r bar which we had over here so click on that again make everything absolute reference 5.3 we've copied it correctly it's 5.3 the upper control limit is simple it's just d4 times r bar so upper control limit equals uh, d4 we come down here let's just click on it in the chart d4 make it absolute reference times your R bar make it absolute reference so that's a little over 11 and the lower control limit it says it equals D3 times R bar but D3 was 0 so it's just going to turn out to be 0 you might notice on the chart that D3 is 0 until you have a sample size of 7 we only had 5 so we were still in the range of it being 0 here well, let's go and copy those three down to make it easy for us to produce our line graph. There we are. Let's get to work at inserting this line graph. So we insert. There's the 2D line. I'll put it where it doesn't obscure everything. There we are. I'll label this as an R this is an R chart. Because what I want to do now is add in the R values. So again, um, I'm working on a PC here. I go and I select my data. I do an add. And the series name would be just the label up here R. And my series values, just select those 12 R values there. 
click OK a couple of times, and we have this chart. Now remember the, the middle line there, the orange one, is just you know roughly what you expect to see your your data grouped around, but none of these values uh, exceeds the upper control limit. So it stays within the upper and lower control limit. So in, in terms of range, this is out of this is in control. Now if out of control, similarly, that just tells the management or perhaps the machine operator, let's go find out why that happened so we can fix that problem. So in summary, control charts are a relatively easy way of tracking a, a system. Every process that you do, you have some sort of system. And it helps you see when the system is out of control so you can go and stop problems before they, before they continue for too long. All right, folks. Well, good luck. I'm signing out.